Uh, in this lab, we are going to complete task 5 to task 8 in this uh, seed 2.0 environment available and set EID lab. So let's uh, open the official website. Okay, here it is. This uh, and this uh, lab source code file and download it. Save so in case. So we create a new folder called a lab 03 and save it here. Now open the folder lab 03. Extract here. And here are all the source code. Ctrl A, Ctrl X, Ctrl V, paste here. Open a terminal window. Okay, now we are ready to go through the tasks. Let's go down, go to task uh, file. For task 1, 2, 4, and 9, we completed in our lab 02. So lab 03. We are going to complete task file to task 8. Task file to task 8. Uh, in task file, environment available and set URD programs. In this program, we want to check set UID programs whether and uh, whether affected by normal user through the environment variables. So we can follow these steps. This program can print out all the environment variables in the current uh, process, compare it and change it to a set UID program owned by root. Okay, now let's uh, do it for this one. It's not uh, listed, not provided in the lab setup, but uh, I provide it here in the code. Let's see uh, which one it does. It looks like it's this one. Uh, there is another way. This one is uh, it's not the one we just see it. Okay, this name are uh, unreadable. So we need to find uh, which one it is. Here we are going to print out all the environment variables through the global pointer. Okay, it's this one. We, we can download this one. Ctrl A, Ctrl C. Come here. Let's use a uh, G editor. Give it a name. Print in dot C. Ctrl V paste here. Ctrl S save it. Okay, now we have this program. Follow these steps. Compile it. We need to close this uh, editor. Now we have uh, printinv.c. GCC printinv.c dash call printinv. 
Okay, here it is. If we just run it, we will get the environment variables. This is step one. Now step two, change to start UID program. Change the owner. Change the mode. Top check. It's a set UID program owned by root. Now let's uh, see whether these environment variables could be printed by this uh, print in program. Before that, we may uh, check whether we have those environment variables. Right? There's a pair, so we have it. It's a system environment variables. Echo for this one, LD, library, path is empty. Now that any name is a uh, user created environment variable, so we can create one. So we can export my bar equals my variable. And that uh, LD library pass, we can set it, give it a value. Library. Pass equals, for example, my calendar folder. Okay, now I have these three uh, environment variables. We can run that print in to see whether we can get these uh, environment variables. Certainly, we can use a uh, print in as we practice in our last lab to print out these uh, environment variables, right? Pass LD library pass. So you see this uh, LD library pass. We, we got nothing, even though we already set it LD library pass equals dot. Do we need an export? We suppose it's a system uh, environment variable, but uh, at the beginning there's nothing, which means it's uh, not inside the environment variable of the current process. That's why we cannot see it. So we we still need to export it. Export LD library pass into the environment space. Then we can use a print in to see it. Right? You will see a dot here. The last one, the user created one. My wall. Oops, uh, not print, it's print in. My variable. Okay, everything is set. Now we check this uh, print in whether it will print out all these environment variables. We can use a grab to find them, or you can save it, output into a text file then to find them one by one. Or you can find it in a single command line. Use a grab. Grab my wall. You see my wall is there. Pass is also there. So how about that uh, LD library pass?
nothing so you can describe for the user created variables uh, it's uh, exported and it can be printed out is passed to the set URD program for this uh, pass is also passed to the set URD program but for this LD library pass uh, it's not passed to the set URD program so this uh, observation the reason we have discussed during our lecture so you can check the slides because this one is very dangerous if it can be manipulated by normal user and we will see in the next task we can attack it by manipulating this uh, environment variable This is a pass environment variable and a set UID programs. First, uh, we have, uh, as we already see, the pass variable can be manipulated and uh, passed to the set UID program. So, this is another uh, attack surface. Let's exploit this one in task 6. First, you can export a pass here, home seed. We can export our calendar folder. Compile it and change to set UID program and run your malicious code. Whether it will run uh, LAS program in your home folder instead of the, this one from the system. If you can use your malicious uh, code running with the uh, root privilege, okay, let's uh, do it. This is an LS program. Okay, you can. Uh, Check this one. Control A, Control C. We use G editor to create a file called S to C. When you check the description, for this program, it calls this LS to ask, to list out the files and uh, folders in the calendar folder. The program is for seed 1.0, so you may uh, use this as one as a reference if you are interested, and is also demonstrated in a video posted uh, in our course companion website. So it looks like this is a completely uh, different one. So let's use a G. At uh, my ls dot c. Now there are also some header files. So those header files actually we can just uh, copy this one as a temp template. Are those head files?
Okay, this is a program listed in this uh, PDF file. Return zero x zero doesn't. Now let's compare and run it. We need to close our text editor, or you can open another tab. You can open another tab. Let's uh, change this uh, ls.c to uh, old ls.c. This is uh, for seed 1.0. Now, what is my ls.c? Is this one. So we can uh, compile it. Dash uh, my ls. If you run my ls, it will call this bin ls and list out the files here, just like uh, a tab ls. Right? We get this uh, output, similar output. Because I just uh, changed some file names, so you can use uh, ls to compare these two output, my ls and this ls. Here is a uh, color highlighted, but for my ls, is not a uh, color highlighted. Actually, it uh, call that uh, ls command that bin ls. We know this ls is from the bin ls. You can tell which ls as we demonstrated during the clutch. Oh, this ls is from the user bin ls, not that bin ls. Certainly you can tell bin ls, that is another ls. There are two ls in our system. Right? You can see uh, you will get this uncolored output. And for that, uh, user bin ls. OK, if we type this way. I don't see the color. You may uh, check online to see whether it's not uh, color highlighted. Now let's uh, modify the system variable pass. We know why it uh, called this one instead of this one. The reason is as we explained during our lecture, because the system will search the folders in these pairs in one of the variables for this order. And you can see the user bin folder is in front of this bin folder. That's why it will call this user bin ls instead of this bin ls. Now, if we manipulate this pairs in one variable, As a normal user, we can uh, do it like this. Export pass equals now I want my local pass to be searched first in front of uh, before any other folders. So put it like this. Then we are. Uh, Double check it. Right, you see this uh, dot is in front of or other folders. Actually, uh, in my last uh, class, I appended the current folder to this uh, variable. Now, my current folder will be searched first. If uh, I have a ls here, it will call my ls. So now let's uh, make a fake ls, for example. We can copy the bin cal this is a calendar, to my calendar folder and uh, name it as ls. So this is a fake uh, one. Now if I type ls, 
you will see uh, it actually call this uh, care calendar how do we use it right it call care so if you run this my ls but it's still uh, called bin ls it didn't call my this ls but if I type ls here now it actually call my calendar so now how could I type uh, ls normally here in this uh, tab or this uh, process bash process I exported the pass or manipulated that pass by a pre pending my current folder but my other tab the pass should be normal right so we can uh, open a new tab when you check it echo pass so you see uh, the current folder dot is not uh, in front of it so we can run uh, ls normally now I have ls here a fake ls actually it's a calendar but when we run this uh, my ls it, it didn't call my local ls right? we, we type this uh, my ls when we run it it will not call the local ls because in this uh, process the path environment variable is not manipulated so in this uh, manipulated one we call my ls it still didn't search uh, my local folder first so what's the problem we check this one currently uh, my ls is a normal program right here in other folder you can check my ls is a normal program now let's change it uh, to a set uid program please make sure you are uh, operating in another tab not the manipulated one the path uh, environmental manipulated so in the normal one we change it search owner to root my ls so do change change mode for seven file file my ls top check now it becomes a set uid program okay come to the manipulated uh, process run this uh, my ls I still uh, run normally the path when you just search it so what's the problem can top check we have this uh, calendar folder in front of our or other folder but uh, it didn't uh, uh, search my ls the reason we know it right here is uh, just the ls result result is the location it will search this uh, pass search the folders inside this pass environment variable if we just uh, give it a name without its location but in my case i specify this uh, specified version so it will call this specified version it will not search through the folders inside this path variable so to make the search through the path variable we need to modify the program here just give it a name without location Connect s save it and now it's saved Go to the normal folder here, this one, the normal folder. We compare it again. This LS, the first of my LS, uh, it uh, just calls the LS from a specified location. 
Now, the second case, as the case described in this task 6, without specifying. So we we'll compare it first. My ls dot c dash o. This time we call it uh, my ls uh, six step six. You, you can use any name you want. Now if I run my ls six, in this normal folder, the path uh, environment path variable is not modified. So we we'll come back here. To this uh, modified my ls6 now you see it uh, call my fake ls first because it search my local folder first to find that ls right this is if it's a normal user program it will uh, be attacked now how about if it's a set uid program so we use uh, change it to a set UID program. Change the owner to root my ls6 and change the mode my ls6 double check my ls6 okay it's a set UID program owned by root. Now this time Let's run it in this uh, manipulated environment. My LS6. You see, it's a set UID program. It, it still accepts the manipulated path environment variable. So, through this way, a security problem or vulnerability is introduced into this program, my LS6. And this is the idea how to attack it. Compare and uh, change it on to dot make this security program. Can you get this and to run your own malicious code? Yes, it is, right? We just see it. It run my fake. Uh, calendar but is your malicious code run with the root privilege so how do we verify this we can use the id program right we can use the id program in our normal uh, environment so this uh, tab the third tab we know currently this ls is a uh, a fake LS just shows the calendar. We know we can use ID this uh, program to show whether our process is uh, privileged or not. So we can use this ID as a fake LS. So we remove our calendar fake LS and uh, copy that ID being ID name it as ls to our current folder so now if you type ls here you type ls here because it's in normal fo folder you still actually it still go to that uh, ls not not our local ls our local ls you need to specify the location this local ls actually is a, is a fake ls it's actually id right? you will see the id Okay, now go to the manipulatory environment. We know my LS6 is a set UID program now. If we run it again, you can see the ID. So it's still a normal user. So we answer this part. We can, right? But if it's a root privilege or malicious code, we are not run with uh, root privilege so it's a uh, protection provided by the operating system here the protection is introduced into this dash if we use another one 
for example, this year, we will see we will have not that protection and we will be able to run with pr pr root privilege. So we can, uh, in our normal bash here, let's change the SH, the bin SH, and uh, link it to this bin ZSH, not this dash. The dash has a protection, but this Z shell does not help. SF being Z shell has been shell. Double check. Okay, now it's uh, linked to this uh, Z shell. Go back to the manipulated environment, run it again. You see that the EID equals zero. So we we are able to run our malicious code with the, this uh, privilege, with the root privilege. So we answer this uh, question completely. If the share, this bin share is linked to this dash, then we will, we cannot do it. We cannot run with uh, root privilege. If it's linked to this Z share, we are able to run our malicious code with the root privilege. So we need to uh, turn off. How do we uh, turn on that pro protection? Turn on that protection, we just link this one back to our dash. Right? Go back to dash. Double check. Now it uh, it's linked to dash. This time it's protected. We will not uh, get the root privilege. Can run it again in this uh, manipulated environment, the middle one. Right, that UID is gone. We can only run it as normal uh, privilege. Task 7, the LD preload and set your ID program. We have demonstrated this one during our lecture, so we just practice through these steps. That is my lab.c. You can check the code to save your time. My lab does see the malicious sure program. Control A, Control C. Go to this uh, G editor. Create a new document here. Control V, save it. Control S. Create my lab does see. Okay, we have this uh, mylab.c used to override the sleep function in the lab C. Here, this is our sleep, the malicious sleep function. Then compare it. Here is run in the normal uh, environment. So this uh, manipulated environment, let's close it. So we have this uh, normal environment. GCC dash F P I C dash G dash C my lab dot C. So I can check here as I have my lab dot O the object file. Then we create a shared uh, library. CCC dash shared dash o 
lab my lab dot s r dot you can use any number dot one for example just dot one my lab dot o dash s right, now you can check I uh, compared uh, lab my lab dot s r dot one now we uh, set the LD preload environment variable, manipulate it. Please pay attention if uh, your lab my lab is different from this one, from here, mine is different from that one. Right? Then you need to change here as well. So export LD preload equals my lab my lab dot so dot one you can double check echo ld preload so its value is my library now compare this my program yeah this one my program I think you can also find in, in our code Let's see which one is this. My program. Okay, here it is. Okay, raw. Can you, uh, can you see? Go back to our text editor. Create a new one. Can we? Control S. We call it my program. Dot C. My prog. Dot C. It calls the sleep uh, function by default from the system library, lab C. But now we manipulate it, it will call our malicious sleep function in this uh, my lab.c. It will call my version, my malicious version sleep function. So go back to the terminal. My program.c here. You follow the instruction in the lab menu. Compare it and run it. GCC my program dot C dash O my prog. If you run it, my prog. You see, it call my malicious function, and my malicious program. Make a regular program run it as normal user. Is this way? No, make it as set UID program run as normal user. So do change the owner to root. Then change the mode for seven five five. Double check. It's a set UID program owned by root. Set program, set UID program owned by root. Now run it again. Run as a normal user. My prop. Now you see it just sleep one second and continue, which means in this case, uh, Malicious library is not called. So this is this case. Now make the cellular result program export this environment again in the root account and run it. In the root account, you run as a root account. How could we do that? We can sudo switch to root. Okay, now it's root. And in this root environment, uh, environment, actually, that LD preload. You see, currently it's uh, empty. We export it.
ld preload matlab is lab matlab double check is there no now we run it as a root account come now i'm inside I'm uh, the root. You can use ID to see, right? The root. So we run this uh, my program again, and you see I'm attacked. If I'm a root, then the malicious code is called. So this uh, this case in the root account I'm running it. Make the set your ID. Use one program, the owner is user one, which is another user account. I export this one again in a different user account, non root user, and run it. So we just uh, use the seat uh, user, right? We exit this uh, root account, go back to the seat, make this a uh, serial program owned by seat. Seed is user one, but it is ask you to. Uh, which is another user account, not the. We need to need two uh, user. Kind of we have a user seed. A different user account. How do we create a user? We can add a user. Right? So do. Add a user. Now we create a user one. Just make it a simple. Give it a password. User one. User one. Full name. User one. For test. Just press enter. Yes. Okay. Now we have a uh, user one. We can switch to user one. First, we uh, make it owned by user one. Dash L, the my pro. Currently, my pro is owned by root, so we let it uh, owned by user one. Change the owner to user one. Now it's owned by user one. We need to double check whether it's still a serial ID program or not. Now you see it becomes a normal program. Not a serial program, so we still need to change the mode to four seven five five my proc. Double check. Now it's a serial program owned by user one. Maybe we'd better also change the group to a user one. So do ch owner user one user one my proc. Double check. It becomes a normal program again. So we need to uh, change its mode. Double check. Okay, now it's a set your ID program owned by Jose One completely. Currently, I'm seat, right? I'm seat. Now I run this program. The serial program owned by user one, and you see it run normally. It calls a normal sleep function, sleep one second and continue. It's not uh, manipulated, even though my LD preload is here. Contains my malicious library, but this one uh, we are run uh, normally. So that's nice, protected by the operating system. Step three. Not the same program, but we have different behaviors in under different situation. Figure out what causes the difference. The environment variables play a role here, and design explain to figure out the main cause and explain why behaviors in step two is different. 
here the child process may not inherit LD environment variables because it's not passed into the child process as we uh, discussed during the lecture. This is the main reason. When we run it here in the child process, this LD preload is not passed into the environment of this my probe when it's a side UID program. If it's a normal program, the LD preload environment variable is passed into the environment and the malicious code will be uh, called. Now task 8. The two way to invoke external programs. This way use the system, the cat call, cat or dot C. And we know this is a dangerous way to invoke us another program. So the program is uh, given cat all because it's a long program. See the list cat all dot C. And we have the cat all dot C. And uh, we can open it here. To have a look, this is a cat auto C. It uses system to call another program, and there's a command this is bin cat and arc v1. Arc v1 is passed through the command line into this program. Okay, now let's compare and run it as normal user first. Uh, please read this one by yourself. It says design the program as uh, a set UID program to let Bob to uh, read any files but not modify modify any uh, other files. So this program is uh, configured as a set UID program. So let's compare it first. GCC uh, CAD R C dash O CAD R. If you run as a normal user, can all it ask you type of file name, for example, a uh, uh, type of file name, can all dot c to see the contents of the source code. Right? You will see the content of the source code because it currently is a normal program. If you want to use it uh, to uh, to check to see the contents of those. Uh, System protected files, for example, the shadow, etc. Shadow, the permission is uh, denied. Here we want to let Bob to use this cat all to see any system files, so we turn it into a set UID program. Change the owner to root. Change the mode. Double check. Okay, the side UID program on by the root. Now this time, run as a normal user. I see it is a normal user. Now this time, we will be able to uh, see this shadow. Do you think uh, we are or we are not? Shadow. Permission denied. So why are we? We are still uh, denied, even though we are is is a set UID program now. So you can check these steps. Can you compress the integrity and so on? It use system to invoke the command. If you were Bob, can you compromise the integral system? Which means, uh, can you remove a file that's not uh, writable to you?
Here, when we run this uh, cat all, we want to see the shadow file. We still cannot see it. And we know inside this uh, code here, the system it called this uh, cat. We know set your program we are given the root privilege when we run it. So that is uh, why we cannot do it. We know that a uh, shell, right? That a uh, bin sh, where it linked to. If the link to this dash, dash has protection. So let's change it to a uh, this shell, the one without protection. Oops. We need a link. Top check. The link to uh, this here. Now let's uh, run cat all again. Shadow. Now you see this time, as Bob, normal user, you will be able to see any uh, system protected files. But uh, as is designed only to read the contents, you know from the source code, it uses this uh, cat, which means you can only read them. Now we are asked whether we can uh, compromise compromise the system. For example, remove a file that's not readable to Bob. So let's uh, open a new tab. In this tab, let's create a file that's only a that's protected, and a normal user cannot delete it. So in our last lab, we have a zzz file. Right? It is zzz. We can use this zzz file as an example. It's owned by root. As a normal user, uh, we cannot delete it. Could we use this cat all to uh, modify this uh, this one? As we learned that is demonstrated in the class, this cat all because we use the system to invoke that cat. So we can do it like this, etc, zzz, semicolon, followed by, uh, let's say, csh. We supply a parameter like this. We want to see where this uh, bin csh be invoked. And you see, first it says, First, it uh, uses that uh, cat show up all the contents in this uh, zzz file. Right? From our last lab, we know there's a content in inside that zzz file. Now, this bin zsh is also invoked as a command and we got a root shell. With a root shell, we can do anything. So, which means certainly we are able to compromise the integrity of the system because now. We can do anything. For example, we we want to uh, write data into a bad data into that zzz file, etc. zzz. Now it's overwritten. You you will use cat to see it. Right, bad data. It's modified. So, Bob are able to compromise the integrity of the system with this attack. Just uh, add another parameter. We manipulated this uh, command line parameter. It, it exploit the system invoke because it uh, will call that being sh first. 
and that bin sh will interpret the parameters passed as command. And when we separate with semicolon, it will interpret this parameter as two. The first one and the second one. The first one, because we separate here, so the first part, it will be uh, concatenated to that of a zero from this uh, command, being cat followed by this etczz to form a single command to show the contents. Then the next uh, one is interpreted as another command, we get this uh, root shell. Next, comment out this uh, system command statements and uncomment this exec VE to see whether we can still uh, attack like we did in step one. So first, let's exit. Uh, please make sure we still have the vulnerable this year linked to that bin sh. So now let's uh, use this a safe way, exit for you. Control S, make sure you save it. Now compare it again. GCC cat all C this time let's call it cat all two. And uh, change it to a strategy ID program owned by root. Pop check. Okay, it's a strategy ID program owned by root. Now let's uh, run it. Right, we can run anywhere, it's okay. Cat all to we want to see whether the attack we used here. The attack we used uh oh, it's not sharp. The attack we used uh, is by manipulating the command line, right? etc zzz z shell so now let's see whether we can attack it now you see it says no such file directly this one is interpreted as data in our previous case it will interpret the second part as a command. Now the whole thing is uh, treated as a single entirety as a data. So with the safe way, we cannot uh, attack using the technique we used. Yeah, step two. Our attack in step one does not work now. We already explained the observation. If you don't uh, get it, check the slides. Okay, we completed our lab 03.